face with everyone. So the general mood is, Krishna, I am offering uh, one light to you. You offer some light to me. That light by which we can see Krishna is praying. So it is a request for Krishna reciprocate that Krishna should give us the light of praying that we can see. On a deeper level. Hmm? Darkness is separation and light is meeting. So the more advanced devotee or oh Krishna, I feel separation from you, so I am offering you this light. Please offer me the light of that I can meet you. <coughs> then uh, those who have a very Madhurya mood in Ragamark, when they offer Arti to Krishna, they are not worshipping uh, like those with Aishwarya Bhav who think I am offering worshipping God with the five elements earth, water and fire and air from the fan, water from the conch, earth from the fragrance of the incense and fire from the deep. They don't think like this. This is the Aishwarya mood. When Krishna comes back from taking the cows to graze in the evening, Madhya Shoda offers Arti to Krishna. So you think that she's worshipping him? So the RT ceremony is one type of reception or greeting. Which is reception. Which is a very uh, auspicious. So Madhya Shoda is offering the deeps to Krishna thinking Oh, I'm whatever inauspiciousness is in your life, I am removing all this. Whatever problem will come to you, let it come to me and you'll be happy. Then Fulendiva Rakantim in the Badanam Baha Patang Sampriam Sri Vatsankurudara Kostabataram Patam Vara Sundaram Go Pinam Nainut Palachitatum Go Go Pasanga Britam Go Vindam Kalavina Vadanapuram Divyanga Busham Baje. Do you know? Why not? These are the Dhyan mantras for the Gopal Mantra. Uh-huh. Story Tilakam Lalata Patale Bakshastale Kostavan. These are the Dhyan they're in the song book, you see. These are the Dhyan mantras. Which are describing the scene which you realize when you remember Gopal Mantra. So here it says Go Gopi Nam Nainut Palachitanam. That the Gopis are offering Arti with the deep of their eyes. And uh, just as the pujari is looking at the feet of Krishna and then the waist and the face and then all around his body, Gopis are very lovingly glancing at Krishna here and there, at Krishna's relishing Krishna's beauty. So like this, many, many, it depends on the level of the devotee. Yeah. In Vaidhi Bhakti, one meaning or few meanings, and in Raganuga Bhakti, every day another meaning, a different one. Not fixed, spontaneous. According to the mood of that day. How do you do Raganuga Bhakti? Oh, like this. Step one, step two, step three. (laughs) (laughs) 
Yes. I want to, to ask about uh, Junda Karan from the first lecture of Galatians or what is it that we heard? Uh, how come if he was such a sinner, he, he was the only one who managed to uh, get Adhikara to listen to Srimad Bhagavatam? Don't look at it. Yes. Yes, yes. Because Because it was his, he was suffering like anything, and it was his only chance. It was his last chance. So he put faith in that. I must hear this with complete attention, otherwise I'm finished. So he was not listening in a casual way. So any time you come in Harikata and you sit and you listen, ah, this is the most fortunate moment of my life. I never heard such beautiful kata in my life. Oh, this kata is so powerful. If only one word, one syllable will go in my ear, I will see Shamasunda. Tomorrow I may die and I'll never have the chance to hear Harikata again. Yeah. So if you hear with such nishta, such faith in Harikata, then immediately Krishna will appear in that. But if you come, oh, it's time for class again. <laughs> I should I better go, otherwise other devotees will say, why were you not in class? <laughs> then I sit down. <laughs> What's he saying? I don't understand. <laughs> oh, what time is it? When is it over? <laughs> I'm hungry. I'm hungry. <laughs> huh? And then you sleep. <laughs> huh? Then the, re- the power, the fruit of hearing Srimad Bhagavatam will not come. <laughs> so Sadyori Devaturte Atakriti B Susus Bitstatana Kriti B means uh, by the pious persons. In other words, when those who are pious just desire to hear Srimad Bhagavatam, Krishna is captured by them. So this piety is not material piety. Here, Kriti B means by the Kriti, by those who are Kriti. It means those who have been made, Kriti, they have been made, they have been refined by the process of Diksha. Labja Nugra Acharyam Tena Sandashita Gamaha Abhyat Mahapurush Abhyachen This verse is in 11th canto, Krishna's teaching to Uddhav. Labdhanugra Acharya. One receives the Anugra, mercy of the Acharya. In the form of Diksha. Panchani Diksha, five types, five aspects of the Diksha sans- Sanskar uh, makes Diksha, five uh, types of Sanskar. Uh, Udva, Pundra, uh, Tapa, Nam, Mantra and Yag. These are, so when one is undergoing these five Sanskars which comprise Diksha. Tena Sangha Dashita Gamaha which is described in the Tantra, Vaishnava Tantra. Then Mm-hmm. Mahapurusha Abhyachan, the devotee engages in the worship 
of the Supreme Lord. And he's worshipping according to the Sambandha that Gurudev has indicated to him. So then gradually one becomes purified of two defects. Mm? Kadarya Shil, bad habits. Because you have to wake up early in the morning, take shower, put on tilak, go to Mangalati, remember Gayatri Mantra three times a day, all these things regulate your life and you overcome bad habits. And next defect is Vikshipta Chitta, means uh, restless mind. The Chitta is Vikshipta, thrown here and there, mind becomes steady by this uh, Pancha Sanskar, five um, purification aspects of Diksha. Before your heart was rough and prickly, prickly like a hedgehog. Eh? That means when you interact with someone, ow, ow, you poke everyone. <laughs> Hmm? Not soft and smooth. Hmm? And rough, you don't feel the sweetness of bhakti. But now, by these pancha sanskars, five aspects of diksha, and doing, ar include doing archa and remembering mantras, everything, so then your heart becomes sadhi, smooth. So now you have become a refined gentleman or a refined gentlewoman. So you are Kriti now. So that person, when they sit and they'll hear Bhagavatam, at once they realize Krishna. Do you all understand? Raise your hand if you understand. Hmm? So what is the necessity of Diksha? Hmm? Uh, uh, Diksha itself is these five sanskars, but what? Why is it necessary to go through these five sanskars? Yes. So first, because of following all the rules and regulations, <coughs> first the, the life, the person gets rid of bad habits, and then his life becomes regulated, and then uh, the second, the second, mm -hmm. his heart becomes soft. Also. Oh. Only doing Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Svaranam, you can get everything without initiation. Yes, you will totally switch idea. But you are doing Shravanam, Kirtanam, Smaranam and not getting everything. Why? Because of two defects. First one. What is it? <laughs> what is the first defect? Bad, bad, habits. bad habits. What is it called in Sanskrit? Kadarya Shil. Shil means your behavior and Kadarya means uh, impious activities or um, yes, impious, un unmeritorious behavior. Kadarya. Hmm. So it's very important to understand. Otherwise you won't understand the Pancharatri Guru Parampara and Bhagavat Guru Parampara. You, you don't need Diksha. Everything can come just by hearing Bhagavatam and Kirtan. That's Bhagavat Mark. 
But still it's not coming to you. So you need Diksha. And that is the Diksha is a, a Pancharatric process. The details of Diksha are not in Bhagavatam because that's the Bhagavat process. The details of Diksha and Pancharatra. So then why do you need Pancharatric Diksha? To remove two obstacles. The first one is Kadarya Shil. And the second one is Vikshipta Chitta. The mind is thrown, the mind is thrown here and they're restless. Mm-hmm. So by, because of these two things, when we hear, we're not having a direct realization there and then. Sadhyo. So we have to be refined by the mercy of Gurudev through the five samskars of Diksha. And become Kriti. Hmm? So let's say someone takes initiation from one from his mantra guru. And by following this, he's slowly becoming refined. Then one day he meets one pure Vaishnava and listens to Srimad Bhagavatam from him. Hmm? And by hearing, he realizes Krishna's Vrindavan Lila. So one guru was his mantra guru, Pancharatrik Diksha guru, and one guru was his Bhagavat guru. So when there's a line of Diksha, Pancharatrik Diksha gurus, that is called Pancharatrik Guru Parampara. And when you trace the current of praying of Braja Rasa through the Bhagavad Gurus, that is called the Bhagavad Guru Parampara. Yeah, you should understand this very deeply. Because you will meet people who say, yeah, you have no parampara. Because you, in your parampara, each one just did not receive diksha from the other. But everyone in the parampara, our parampara has diksha. But from different, the Pancharati diksha parampara is different lines. Mm-hmm. And but we are telling our prampara is Nigamakalpurturogalitampalamishukamakadamritadravasamyatam. The rasa of Bhagavatam is flowing from Bhagavad Guru to Bhagavad Guru in this Bhagavad Guru Prampara. So our Param Guru Dev very beautifully explained all of these things. You can read in his biography um, the chapter called Pancharat Guru Prampara and Bhagavad Guru Prampara. It's very rare these days that devotees understand this subject deeply. So they have doubts. They think only a Pancharat Diksha Guru Prampara is actually a Prampara. But this means that they are Kanishta Adhikari, that they only have faith in Archan. Archya Puraharaye Sadaya Pujasya Sadaye Te Natat Bhakti Shu Chaneshu Sa Bhakta Prakrita Smritaha. The definition of the Kanishta Adhikari means they only have faith in Archan, and Pancharatik Diksha is one sub anga of the anger of Bhakti called Archanam. Diksha is one of the one of the sublims of the complex of activities called the anger of bhakti archana. Uh-huh. So that person who have this opinion, they are not doing Shravanam, Kirtanam or Svaranam. 
They are only doing archana. They are thinking they are doing Shravanam, Kirtanam, Smarana, but their Shravan, Kirtan and Smarana is part of the complex of activities called Archana. So they have faith in Archan, so they are Konishta Adik. They have not understood even what the name, what the word Sravanam, Kirtanam, Smaranam mean. Sravanam means you hear and you see. Kirtana means you chant and you see. Smarana means you remember and you see. <laughs> Those are the angers of bhakti, Sravanam, Kirtanam, Smarana. And if you're asking, oh, what is step one, what is step two, what is step three? How many circles should I make? <laughs> what should I remember next after that? This is all the di different aspects of the complex anga of bhakti called archana. And that person is the resident of Konishta Lok. <laughs> they don't know anything outside that world. <laughs> so they cannot understand the Bhagavad Guru Parampara because they never learned Siddhanta properly. <laughs> Gurudev used to say they don't know how to wash their hands after passing stool. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Do you know how to wash your hands after passing stool? <laughs> Why not? Have you not read Hari Bhakti Vilas? There's explanation <laughs> there. <laughs> how you take the the soil and then you sift it and then you have to wash your uh, uh, right hand and then your left hand ten times, one time, and then get new sand, and another time. It's everything, all the, the video of how to wash your hands after passing. <laughs> so, without knowing the basic things, they try to go into a higher realm. <laughs> so try to understand Siddha. What I'm telling you, I'm giving you the exact words of Srila Jiva Goswami in Bhakti Sandarbha. So after hearing, then read it and then deliberate on it. Gaur Pramanandri.